Tell call if required. Okay. So, sir, we are going live on YouTube. Okay. Santosh, do you want to wait for a minute or two? Because we still have five minutes. Um, no, just in go live on the YouTube. Then... And, yeah. We can go, sir. We can go because uh, we are live on YouTube now. Okay. All right. But anyway, we will wait for five minutes, three, four minutes for others to join. Just to share with you, sir, that uh, lots of other uh, friends of ours from various police services, state police service, including many inspectors, they're all there on the YouTube from different parts of the state. And also we have many civil service aspirants. So all preparing for civil services. So we have a spectrum of uh, participants this evening. Uh, they're all very keen to listen to you, sir. Shivanandan was to join. I don't know whether he has joined or not. Uh, I think we can ring up and I think we, we can get him on the screen. I think if we can get him, it will be very nice. He is involved in so many things that I don't know when he has time to. <laughs> but uh, he told me that he would love to join the program. Yeah, yeah but uh, he is. Shivanandan told me he would like to join the program. Uh, he's not an Ajit, no? He's not an Ajit, sir. He's no. not an Ajit. A good friend of mine. I yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, sir. Mm. Sir, when you have said Ajit, uh, sir, our life is made. <laughs> Your life, yeah. Uh, it's done, sir. Uh, in Canada, they call it Sartakavaitu. <laughs> See the smile on everyone's face, sir, when you said Ajit. <laughs> And from you being recognized, sir, it is like Brahma recognizing us. I don't know about that, but I'm first time I heard about Ajit, and I'm very happy that you all are going by that identity. You have made an identity for yourself, sir. sir I think your... it's a very, very good idea. Thank you, sir. Sir, your kind information today. See, the vice chief of army staff is Ajit. Oh. And yes, sir. And the flag officer commanding the southwestern command is an Ajit. Then the one commanding the naval is uh, Ajit. So we have our people, sir, yes, lots of them at uh, top rank. Then we have members of parliament, we have members of legislative assembly, and of course, civil servants. So we have a wide range of people, sir, including people who are into journalism. So all kinds of uh, backgrounds, sir. We also have IAS officers, sir. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so it's a wide range, sir. So Ajit is primarily sir, our school motto. Ajit hai, Abhit hai. I know, I've seen that. Yes, sir. Invincible and fearless. And one of our first principals, Wing Commander K.D. Singh, yeah. who, led, who went on to becoming Air Vice Marshal, <laughs> the one who gave us this motto. Good morning. Yes, sir. From good morning, sir. Yes, sir. In fact, sir, today my friend, our batchmate from Chandigarh was saying that you are so regular in writing in tri Tribune. Every third or fourth day, he sees your article. Not every week on Fridays. Yeah. Yes, yes, sir. I keep reading your article, sir. Yeah. So, <laughs> so they're wondering how at this age you still write and, uh, and with the force you're writing as always. So, <laughs> they were... Evidently at this age, I can write, but I... I can't walk. <laughs> I, I, can, I do walk. I do walk, but but I'm physically a uh, little challenged, you know, in the sense that I can't walk like I could at the age of 90. Satish Manishinde has come. Sir, good evening, sir. Satish Manishinde here. Hi, Satish. Hi, sir. Sir, I'd come up earlier, but my uh, captain told me to go and change. So, <laughs> to. I've dressed like you asked me to dress. <laughs> sir, I'm so grateful. <laughs> I requested you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> With your tie also, but you are not wearing that tie. Well, my tie has been loaned to you, so I had to wait for the next supply. <laughs> um, some guys from Pijapur will send it to me. Sir, can we start, sir? We need button. Yes. Yeah, yes. Now you can. Yes. Now it is six. Yes, sir. On the yes. dot. Yes, yeah, Satish, uh, we are good to go now. Yeah. Okay. 
so we begin. good evening dignitaries and respected attendees i am your host satish inamdar roll number 3485 adilsha house from the 2007 batch and i will be coordinating today's session as people are joining in we will just give a couple of minutes for everyone to settle down as our audience is joining us via multiple platforms like zoom webinar and youtube live i would like to brief you all about today's agenda real quickly firstly we will have a welcome note and introduction to ajit knowledge forum by prakash saigavi sir then we will have an introduction of our distinguished guest speaker of the evening by ranga jagannath sir then our honorable guest speaker will address this virtual gathering this will be followed up by a q and a session which will be coordinated by three member panel consisting of satish maneshinde sir shu prasad kenet sir and shakil gundagi sir we will then have a talk from our mentor ashok dalwai sir followed up by the presidential remarks by none other than gopal hosur sir vote of thanks will be presented by amok and we will conclude with our national anthem before we begin i would like to go over a few protocols to ensure that we can get through this program with minimal disruptions please be sure to mute your microphones if you are not speaking and exactly. be aware that your video is being broadcast thank you for your cooperation it seems to me that now we have the quorum therefore without further ado i would like to begin today's program to start i would like to request prakash saigavi sir who belongs to the batch of 1975 Prakash sir has held many prestigious positions and roles during his career in the field of education spanning over 3 decades from being the head of department to being the controller of examination and finally retiring as assistant secretary for Maharashtra Board of Technical Education sir i request you to welcome the virtual gathering that we have today and provide us information and insights into the ajit knowledge forum akf over to you sir thank you satish good evening ladies and gentlemen ajits families of ajits and friends worldwide i take this opportunity on behalf of akf on this auspicious festival day of shivratri to welcome the principals staff and students of sainik schools at vijaypura satara nagrota in jammu and kashmir sujanpur and kunjpura at their auditorium doon management college dehradun AIMR MBA College Shankeshwar VSM Engineering College Jolly group of institutions who have almost 10 institutions in number who are joined today KLE BBA College Chikodi to this session of Ajit Knowledge Forum I also welcome participants from the corporate field Progress IFM Bengaluru Magnum Tough Nipani Navin Enterprises Hubli Bhaskar Refrigerations Belgaum and nirva pune we are very privileged and pleased to welcome our global participants from the university of malaysia and corporates from color bucket limited kenya a warm welcome to the media teams from prajawani and maruti too ajit knowledge forum fondly called akf is one of the verticals of the ajit alumni association an association of pass outs of saini school vijaypura first while bijapur this forum is a platform that facilitates the association's vision for ajit to lead a purposeful and fulfilling life and to achieve its mission of promoting the spirit of camaraderie compassion and cooperation so as to stimulate their individual and collective interest in service of fellow ajits our alma mater and our society started since august 2021 akf has been conducting online talk programs chat sessions related to various fields of entrepreneurship science and technology health information technology films space spirituality defense etc with the likes of captain g r gopinath and ajit himself sri subroto bachchi dr devi shetty mr sham benigal wing commander rakesh sharma dr marshal kar Dr. Lalit Kanodia, the late Pooja Siddeshwar Swami ji, 
and Lieutenant General Syed Atta Hussain. Our 10th session today shall be a conversational address, one with a very eminent, nationally acclaimed strict police officer, a man known for his strategic leadership, professional integrity with a human approach to policing and a no-nonsense man putting nation before self and a recipient of the Padma Bhushan Award, Mr. Julio Francis Riverio Sir, who believes in Sadarakshanaya Khalanigrayanaya, which means to protect the good and to punish the evil. I am fortunate and opportune to welcome you, sir, for today's session. I again extend my warm welcome to you all this evening. Thank you, and back to you, Satish. Thank you, Prakash, sir, for providing information about Ajit's Knowledge Forum. For more information, you can always visit our website, www.ajits.org. If you are an alumni of Sunny School Vijaypura, please register on the website. I would urge you to read the vision and the mission statements on the website. And I strongly believe it has a lot to offer for the ever-growing Ajit's community. Now, I would like to invite the charismatic Ranga Jagannath sir. He belongs to the batch of 1985. He is a business leader and currently heads growth at Agora, a leading video, voice and live interactive streaming platform as senior director. Ranga sir, I request you to please introduce our eminent guest and speaker of the day for our audience. Over to you Ranga sir. Thank you Satish. And thank you, Prakash Ayagavi, sir, for the warm welcome and for giving us a background of the Ajit Knowledge Forum. My dear Ajits, teachers, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this special location where we have the privilege of introducing a man who has made a tremendous impact in the field of law enforcement and security, Mr. Julio Francis Ribeiro. Mr. Ribeiro has been a pioneer in shaping the Indian law enforcement system and has been a leader in this field for many years. Born in Mumbai on May 5th, 1929, he is considered one of India's most successful and respected police officers, known for his integrity, humor, humility, courage, and commitment to justice. After graduating from college, Sri Julio Ribeiro worked as a journalist for a couple of years before joining the Indian Police Service in 1953. Mr. Ribeiro, began his career as a subdivisional police officer from a police subdivision in Kolhapur, from where he moved to Nashik. It was here that he got his baptism in ground level policing. Mr. Ribeiro firmly believes that the posting as a subdivisional police officer and as an assistant superintendent of police are the most important ones which help police officers in their career. Mr. Ribeiro has held a number of important postings despite his reputation for not succumbing to political pressures. He has provided an extensive piece of advice for dealing with politicians in his autobiography. He believes that it is through tact and determination rather than hate and alienation that politicians can be tackled effectively. Rising to be the commissioner of police Mumbai, he was central to taming the notorious smuggling mafia that had made Mumbai its home. He then worked as Director General, Central Reserve Police Force, before being transferred to Ahmedabad as Director General of Police, Gujarat, to deal with the communal rights. Having successfully dealt with the problem he was, problem, he was made Special Secretary to the Government of India's Home Ministry, a coveted position that is one of the highest that a civil servant in India can aspire to become. However, due to the troubles ongoing in Punjab, the government of the day invoked a rare change of cadre for an IPS officer, and Mr. Ribeiro was sent to Punjab as Director General of Police during its worst years of terrorism. Mr. Ribeiro revitalized the sagging morale of the police force in, in Punjab and led the transformation of Punjab police into a fighting fit force. With his skill, pursuit of excellence, and leading by example, Mr. Ribeiro steered the police force in a ferocious crackdown on Sikh militants, despite an assassination attempt on his life. Sri Ribeiro went on to become an advisor to the governor of Punjab. In addition to his 
police career, Mr. Ribeiro also served as India's ambassador to Romania, where he survived the second attempt on his life. During his career, Sri Ribeiro dealt with many incidents of communalism, and it was his staunchly secular beliefs and following which helped avert many tragedies. One of the most important initiatives which helped him in combating communal rights is the formation of Mohalla committees. This was his brainchild, and these committees played a major role in diffusing communal tensions in Maharashtra. His unwavering commitment to justice and his ability to lead with compassion have earned him numerous accolades, including the President's Medal for Distinguished Service. He also received the Padma Bhushan in addition to the Legion of Honor, France's highest order of merit. Mr. Julia Ribeiro is the author of a book titled Bullet for Bullet, My Life as a Police Officer. The book provides a behind the scenes look at his experiences and provides a unique perspective on the Indian police force and the challenges it faces. Endearingly, his autobiography also cites many examples to highlight the maverick in him. Mr. Ribeiro is known for his striking ability to understand human psychology and has made him popular both within the department and outside. He always took part in jogging with fellow policemen, attending their sports meets, playing hockey with his force, which helped him to form a good rapport with his colleagues and juniors. To this day, by maintaining a fit body and mind, he is able to lead an active and fulfilling life. Mr. Ribeiro personifies what it means to be a true leader and has made a difference in the lives of countless individuals and has left an indelible mark on the Indian security landscape. Thank you, sir, for gracing us with your presence today. Back to you, Satish. Thank you, Ranga, sir. Satish, for... Satish just a minute. You know, I wanted to uh, have an interruption to introduce Mr. Shivanandan. Uh, the former IPS officer who belongs to the 1976 batch, Maharashtra Kada, who also served as a police commissioner, who is also a highly reputed and uh, respected police officer. Sir, uh, he has just joined. Sir, please welcome. And we are very happy to have you amidst us, amidst our Rajit fraternity, sir. Mr. Shivanandan, sir, can we see you? Yeah, we'll get you on the screen. I think he joined on the YouTube and uh, somebody can help him to come onto the screen. Okay, Arvind Pradhani can do that. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, Satish. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So, thank you, Ranga, sir, for introducing our esteemed guest. It is indeed a great opportunity to have him amongst us this evening, even though it is virtual. It still is definitely a privilege to listen to him today in real time. I'm definitely excited and looking forward. And I hope you all are excited and equally eager to listen to Sri Julio Francis Ribeiro, sir. Sir, I would like to humbly request you to kindly address the virtual gathering. Over to you, sir. Okay, thank you so much, Satish. Uh, let me address you first. As dear, invincible and fearless Ajits, starting with your president, Gopal Hosur, your mentor, Ashok Dalwai of the IAS. You know, the IAS officers are generalists. They can fit into any job, but he is an expert on agriculture, as I have just seen. And I've read about the motto of the Ajits. Ajit hai, Abit hai. I have not come across so many Abits in my whole life, including that of the police. Because I think that fear is a very important uh, human instinct, keeps us alive. And I will just start by two assassination attempts which were mentioned by somebody. First one was in Jalandhar, where, which is the armed headquarters of the Punjab police. And we have an officer's mess there. And I used to go very often and stay in that mess. And my wife used to accompany me. And we were, and at seven o'clock in the morning, as is my habit even today, 
we would go out for a walk. My wife is no longer there. She died three months ago. But I still go for that walk. And this, uh, I uh, never expected uh, assassins to come there. And uh, because it was a very well guarded um, uh, headquarters of the armed police. But these fellows were very clever. They had painted a jeep in police colors with police written on it. And in front, along with the driver who was in police uniform, there was somebody dressed as an inspector. And behind him were four others from the same group of assassins. One as a head constable and three others as constables. And they were all properly dressed in the police, in the Punjab police uh, uh, colors. When they saw an inspector, they gave him a butt salute. They opened the door, otherwise the door is always locked during this, uh, uh, when, when the terrorist activity began, the doors were locked. Before that, of course, it used to be always open. And uh, they entered and they came up to the mess and around the mess were three uh, uh, police, uh, Punjab policemen uh, armed uh, with, their, uh, with their muskets and they were shot dead. They were the first people who were shot dead and they were all Sikhs. And I heard that gunfire and I knew they had come for me. And as soon as they looked over the wall and began shooting at me, I, uh, uh, you know, my reflexes were good. So I slept on, I just lay down on the floor. My wife didn't understand what was happening and she began bawling and asking, what has happened to you? Whereupon she got the bullet, and uh, I and they and they thought that they had killed me, and they got into their jeep and and went went away from another side. They they knew all the topography of the place. While going, they also shot at the at the guard in the CRP uh, CRP uh, headquarters. I mean, or not headquarters. We had given them a temporary place where they stored their arms, etc., And they had mounted a guard there. So that poor guard was also shot. So not only three Punjab policemen, but one CRP man was also shot. But, uh, and, and then they announced that, uh, please pick up the body of your DGP from so-and-so place. Of course, there was no body. And people who came running, uh, our officers, when they heard about it, so I said, let's chase them. And we chased, we went running after them. We got into our vehicles, went up to that place. But they had, they had obviously kept a, uh, uh, a, a getaway vehicle in which they got into and went away. Later on, they were taken, they were caught. One of our own people had helped them. One of our own people inside the mess. So he was also caught and uh, uh, they were prosecuted. Uh, so that was the first assassination attempt. It was done very cleverly. And uh, uh, the prime minister, when he heard about it, he asked me to come and meet him. And he said that now I must have a, a proper IPS officer in charge of my security. Because till then I had not bothered about such. I, I didn't have that that kind of experience before. In, in Mumbai, we never went with any security. We just uh, went wherever we liked and without anybody to accompany you, I used to go for my jog in the morning. So it was very funny that this assassination attempt led to so much security later on, where your own privacy is totally uh, destroyed. But it was a very cleverly done assassination attempt. And it is not possible to be uh, uh, um, abhit at such times. I mean, you, uh, I got a phone call asking me whether I would like to continue there. I said, of course, I may not have liked to join this place, but now that I have this experience, I'm certainly not going to give up. On the contrary, I have to redouble my, my uh, efforts to 
to settle these people. So that was the first assassination attempt. The, I, I got only a scratch. They fired 59 rounds in Jalandhar and they smashed the whole of the mess. The frontage was totally smashed. It was all glass all around. I got a small scratch on my, on my arm. My wife got a bullet through her leg and she had to get it, uh, the, the wound, uh, you know, open. And it, anyway, it didn't, it didn't affect her because it didn't touch the bone. But in, uh, in a book, book in, what is the capital of Romania? Uh, now, my, at the moment, Bucharest. Bucharest. Bucharest, yes, Bucharest. 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 Of course, I've stayed there for four years. So in Bucharest, in Bucharest they, uh, I don't know how they got in. That was after Ceausescu was shot. They got in, they crossed the, the borders. They must have paid the border guards. There's five dollars or something, because that is what the going rate was at that time. And uh, they entered and they staked out the whole place. They saw that I, I went for, for a walk in a certain direction. Now the our uh, raw, and then from the raw, they passed on the information to the IB. So from the IB, I got a message that I should take local uh, security, that I should approach the foreign office in Romania. And that there was, a, there was going to be an attempt on my life. So the first thing I did, I stopped walking along that same place where I used to go because they only look at your, your normal uh, routine and they take you on your routine. So I changed it and I went to all sorts of places along different routes for my walk, but I didn't go along the path which I normally went. It was only after about 21 days or 22 days that I decided that now uh, they won't expect me to go by this way. And that was a very good walk, so we took it. And my goodness, they were there. When I heard the, their vehicle screech, I knew that again that they had come for me. They jumped out. There were four of them, uh, the driver and one other office, one other man in front and two behind. And the, the two in front, the driver, and the, they, they uh, remained as guards. And the other two chased me, shooting all the time. And I can tell you, I was... Uh, 62 years old at that time. They were the opposite, I presume. They must have been around 26. And, uh, and they chased me and they kept firing. I suppose because they were firing, uh, they could not uh, catch up. But I got into some house nearby on the side. And just at the door of that house, I got the bullet on my, on my back. And then that I was landed up in the ICU there, which is... Uh, a very egalitarian hospital and uh, uh, for 21 days, 21 or 22 days, um, but till the wound healed. The wound was, uh, you know, the bullet passed right uh, uh, through me. And I won't mention the place from where it passed because I'm still having the repercussions of that. Even if I wish to urinate, I have to sit down. I, I can't stand. I can't urinate standing up. So this is the, this, but the fear, I'm talking about it is reference to the Abit part of it. It is not possible or to be Abit in such cases. Uh, you, 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 you know that they have come for you, so you have to take your precautions. And in one place I, I lay down and tried to save myself. In the other place I ran, I ran and I, he ran faster than these boys. And two of them, the, but the Romanian security was excellent. Excellent. I mean, I can tell you that they are very well trained. I suppose they had Ceausescu's old, old time. And then they got two of them. They brought down two of them and they caught one more of the other two. And only one man escaped, but he escaped in another escape car. So there were five of them I found out. And they disappeared. And they told me that they would catch their, the two of them, but they never managed to do that. I don't know from where they escaped, whether they escaped through Bulgaria, which was also quite close. And 
So this was uh, about uh, being abhit and uh, the assassination attempts uh, will, 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 be, will force you not to be an abhit. You have to be always careful. Well, let me now talk about Bijapur. I used to be the SP at Sholapur from 1962 to 64. The SP at, at Bijapur was a Goan like me. I come from Goa and so did he. And incidentally, we were, I didn't know him then, but we were uh, neighbors from my mother's village and his village were next to each other. Uh, Padmakar Hallankar, very fine officer. I is, is no more, but he was DGP of Karnataka. He was commissioner of police, Bangalore. I, I remember him with great, with great affection. Uh, at one stage in Delhi, we were staying near the, on the same building, and we, uh, uh, we. So he used to come from Bombay because his wife was from Bombay. So whenever he went home to his wife's place, he would, they would both come and have breakfast with us, and then take a, uh, and then their car would be sent from Bijapur and they would go there. I had mentioned to Satish Manashinde that the first bishop, <clears throat> the local clergy of Goa, the first man, the first priest, the local priest, a Goan priest who was made a bishop, was made bishop of Bijapur. And though he, he like, like me and everybody else who was, and all our ancestors were converted and we had castes and we had, we had our own, surname and uh, we, uh, our surnames were all changed and we were given the surname of the of the priest if the priest was a ribero you got, you got that surname irrespective of your caste so they wanted to break that caste system they did not they did not succeed they wanted to see that we stopped speaking our own mother tongue which is konkani they only succeeded as far as the the elite, what you call his concern. But though they also, at home, they did speak Konkani, but they also started learning Portuguese. But the poor Christians were the great majority, and they mostly belonged to the, to the uh, what do you call the OBCs now. I mean, they, they, they had never uh, learned Portuguese, and they, they continued to speak Konkani. So that also the Portuguese did not this. But what I was talking about is that this gentle, this uh, priest was made the Bishop of Bijapur. And when he was made Bishop of Bijapur, his surname had been made, his family surname had been uh, changed to Castro. He was Mateus de Castro, Don Mateus de Castro. And he, but he added his Hindu surname, old family surname, which was Mahale. You know, it was a very common Saraswat surname. And uh, uh, he was from my wife's village of Divar. And that is how, <laughs> so Bijapur has got a connection with me through Hallankar and Mateus de Castro. But Mateus de Castro, I did not know, this was 200 years ago. But, but Mark Hallankar I did, and he was a good friend of mine. So that was about Bijapur. Another connection I have with your, with your uh, uh, institution, the Sainik school, was that one of my friends became the principal of the school, Siriako Lovo. He was of my age, he was born in the same year, but he went to St. Javier's College. He was a very good student, always first class, a first class student right through his university days. And uh, I went to another college where commerce only was was there was only one from those days two commerce colleges in Bombay. Now there are so many you can't count. There was only one law college in those days, and I went to that later. So there now you have so many law colleges. So this is uh, Siriaco. Siriaco was his elder brother, was my colleague in the IPS. He was he had a fantastic reputation. He became he was in charge of the prime minister's security at one stage. When the prime minister Moraji Desai had an air accident, he was the, the, uh, the main 
um, person in charge of his security. And uh, later he became the director of CBI and he was the director of CBI when I was um, um, in the CRP at the headquarters in Delhi. And the, this is my connection to your institution. Now I'll just, uh, I was told by Mani, uh, Satish Manishinde and the other gentleman who came to see me at my house that they would like to hear something about uh, my career and how, you, you know, people today also tell me, uh, Rivero Saab, in your time, it was like that. And now it is quite different. We, are not, we don't know why that time cannot come back. Well, it is a different epoch and a different time. You can't expect the same situation now. I, will, I often think to myself <laughs> that if I, if I was the commissioner today, I think I would, I would just check up the job. It is not possible to, to, to function in the way it is being dealt with now because they, uh, uh, the commissioner is no longer in charge of, the, of his own men. And unless they know who is in charge, uh, it's very difficult to run an organ an, uh, uh, organization or a force like the police or, or even in the army. Say the army, if, if the defense minister began begins saying where he should attack and where he should not, you know, what should be the tactics when I suppose we lose every war, but in every <laughs> battle. And this is what is happening on the streets of, of the cities. They are losing every battle because uh, they have to follow the instructions that are given to them by the politician, which is not their job. It's the job of the police. You choose the correct man, and if he doesn't deliver, you change him. But you can't decide to, to, uh, to run the force. Well, after I had retired, I found that the, uh, the home minister here used to call the, even the inspectors to, to his office and tell them what to do. So I, I picked up my phone and remonstrated with him. How can you do that? And I wrote in the newspapers, particularly in the Marathi papers. So he got a little upset and told me, what are you doing, Rivero Saab? You are, you, are, you are making fun of me. I said, but you are, you are running the force and that is not your job. And then, uh, uh, so, it, but they are doing it. And that is what is causing all the, 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 all the blips that you see uh, in the service. So let me tell you about four postings, the last posting that I had, and then the main things that happened there and how I, live, how I dealt with it. The first was in Thane. I was the first police commissioner of Thane. Thane is, is just near Bombay. It's as, it is not as big as Mumbai, of course. It is much smaller. So it was easier to handle a commissionerate like Thane. And uh, I caught, got hold of my DCPs. One of them was the former SP of, the, of Thane City, who, who poor fellow lost his, I mean, he was subsumed into the commissionerate. Like I was subsumed many years earlier when I was the SP of Pune, Pune City. I was the last SP. And then they formed a commissionerate. Then you become, you remain as the DCP and you help the commissioner to do his job. So here I asked them, what should we do in order to make a difference from the old system to the present system? And they said, people will be happy if we, if we uh, liquidate these anti-social elements. And the anti-social elements are the ones who deal with, with liquor, who deal with uh, gambling, who, uh, the, the satta betting, and also the, the uh, prostitution. These are the ones that really uh, rule the roost because they pay off the police, and that is the problem. Uh, they, get, they are not put in check. Now, I said, how do we do that? Let me think about it. And fortunately for me, at that time, there was the police unions and the policemen 
uh, I called them and I said, what is your problem? I know what your problem is. The pro and I said, you can't fool me. I know for certain that you are fighting over the haftas, over the distribution of the spoils that the police stations get. So I said that I am with you. If you want to fight it, I am there with you. And they were so enthusiastic that I saw that this was my best chance to do what the people wanted. Because after all, we are servants. We are servants of the people. And the people don't want these reasons <coughs> because they find that they, are, they, be, they really um, overstep their limits and um, they, are, they are not criminals who want to hide their, their themselves or their identity. They in fact boast of their identity because they are so close to the police. So we took the help of these policemen and, and of course the DCPs and smashed all those. And I think we really smashed it because I remember one uh, after much after uh, when I was shifted to, to Mumbai city as commissioner, uh, one uh, uh, journalist from from Thane coming and telling me that there was an old, I know her, she was an old BJP uh, worker in one of the one of the small places there. And uh, but she was very, very tough. And uh, uh, she, it appears this, one of my successors uh, wanted to show that he was as, as, uh, active as me in smashing this anti-social element. So he said, are you happy now, uh, Mrs. So-and-so? So she said, no, I'm not. Please do it like Ribeiro did it. Now, I think the difference was that I really meant to smash it. Whereas if you don't really mean to smash it, you just want to show and make a, make a show of it, which is very common. And then uh, uh, they are not going to People are not going to believe you. People are not fools. They understand very easily if the if the those uh, slum, those lords, those drug lords and others, if they really care about what the police is doing, and if they are frightened, the people would know. So this is in Thane. That was the main thing that I did. I was there for less than a year. Then I was transferred to Mumbai as the police commissioner. It was Bombay was my, uh, though I, my family uh, roots are in Goa, but basically uh, I was born in Bombay. My, my, my grand, great grandfather had, had, uh, had uh, migrated to Mumbai 200 years. Now it is 200 years. So at that time, say 125 years before. And uh, I consider myself as a Bombay Goan, Mumbai Goan. Even my cousins over there who are in Goa, they call me a Mumbai Goan. They call me and my brothers and my sister Mumbai Goans. And so um, Mumbai is my birthplace and my, uh, my karma. I uh, went to school there. I went to college there. And I know a lot of people. And in Mumbai, it's a little more difficult to do what I did in Thane. But if you ask me what was the main thing I did, well, in, in Mumbai, to make people remember, I saw one thing which, I, which really weakens the police, is that the policemen and the police officers at the lower level, they go and get their postings and their, uh, you know, pressure put to on the commissioner from the mantrala, from, from the politician. And each one of them has uh, some political connection because they come from the villages, they come from different places in Maharashtra, and there's always somebody to help them. So I called them all. I called the, the, not the whole lot of, of the force, but the main from each uh, uh, rank, even from the constabulary. And I said, I'm not going to do any of those transfers if I get any such pressures. You come to me. Every Friday, you can meet me. Every Friday, I will not meet the public. I'll only meet policemen, policemen's wives, policemen's children, policemen with whatever uh, requests they have or complaint they have. 
anybody could come, but they should be policemen of their families. And uh, many of them I wanted transfers. Some of them were quite genuine. Some wanted, I presume, to make money. But I just told them that I'm going to watch you. I'll give you the place you want, but I'll watch you. If there are complaints, I'll send you to a far off place. Do you know, in my three and a little more than three years I was there, I didn't get a single complaint. Nobody told me that so-and-so is a damn nuisance in the area. And because nowadays you get that type of, even now that I've retired, you get these kind of complaints of people telling you that so-and-so is a, is a nuisance. And uh, so uh, this was uh, what I did in, in Mumbai. Another thing I did in Mumbai, there is what we call a police notice. Every day it comes out. And it is in the name of the commissioner. Sometimes the commissioner himself doesn't know that such an order is given. And mainly for Bandobas, when there is some Bandobas to be done, there is a strike by Datta Samant. They will say so and so, and so, so many inspectors, so many sub-inspectors, so many policemen from this police station will report to this police station for this work. That is how they would set, send out that whole thing in my name. So I said that they, sometimes the policemen don't know for what they are being sent. So I got them, all my DCPs together and I said, y'all talk to your inspectors in the police station and find out what they think, how it should be tackled. And the inspectors before telling you that should talk to the policemen and find out at the time of that roll call, what they should do, what they feel should be done so that they feel involved in that work, that they are part of the whole uh, system. system or the whole, uh, this that we have, the whole, uh, uh, what is the, the whole thrust of our, this, to see that the work, the, that our meeting that particular problem is done in a proper way. And I think it, it does, did help Okay. So, so this is about uh, Mumbai. Involve the policemen in the decision-making process. Make them feel that they are part of the whole project. That they, they do their job much better. If they don't know what they are going there for, which very often happens, then it is pointless sending them on, a, on and, and making them stand. I've seen them standing and doing nothing, even when there is a big riot going on. So now when they know what they're going there for, and they are part of the decision, they will work much better. So this was a true thing that I did. Maybe they don't, I did, even today, they don't forget it. Then in Gujarat, I was sent there for four months. You know, the army, army people were there for five months before I was sent there. And they were pressing the government to relieve them. So the government was very keen on, uh, on imposing president's rule in case it was not possible to bring it under control. So they asked me, I was the DG of the CRP. So I was called to the, um, to the, cabinet secretary's office or actually to his house and told that they have decided to send you to, to, to Gujarat. So I said, well, and they had kept on vehicle, the plane also ready for me to go. So, but I said that there's one condition I would like to impose that they should not interfere because in Gujarat, there's a lot of interference in transfers, continuous interference. I said, no interference of any type. I'm not going to listen to them. And they agreed. So I immediately found out uh, it was a communal riot. And the uh, officer in charge of the army, the major general, the area commander, he told me that five battalions were on the streets. And they had become useless for war. This is what he told me. He said, there was an attack. These five battalions are useless. And if I, uh, if I had to put them in battle shape, 
I require five months to put them in battle shape. If you keep them longer, I'll require so much time more to put them in battle shape. So I said, don't worry, I'll relieve them in one week. So I made in made in, uh, provision for paramilitary forces, not many, not so many as the army, five battalions, not necessary. Not even one battalion was required. But what I did was I found out who are the people from the Hindu side and from the Muslim side who were active in the, in the riots. And I detained them. And, I, and nobody was allowed to, to, to interfere in that. In the Hindu side, it was all the VHP people who used to write scurrilous, uh, uh, scurrilous messages on the walls of, the, of all the walls. And, and in the Muslim side, it was the bootleggers who were, in, who were distributing arms, etc. So I, I had them all locked up and the thing ended. I, so that was in Gujarat. And finally, Punjab. Punjab was totally different. It required a ch separate chapter altogether. I had no uh, experience of, of, uh, of uh, uh, terrorism. Terrorism is a different kettle of fish because the innocent people are, are targeted. It's not your enemies or somebody. It's not a different community that is, it's just that they want to cause terror and they will murder, they'll just come down, they would come down and there, there was a Jagran or if there was a Kata reading, they would just shoot the people there. And as long as they were Hindus, they were, as long as they didn't have beards and, 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 and uh, head, headgear. So it was a very, very sad, in, and so we had to stop it. And uh, I had uh, laid down that the rules, but the police inspectors, six or seven of them, huge fellows, they, you know how the Sardars are, they came to see me. And they said, Rivero Saab, you come from Bombay, where the law is quite is different, where people are law abiding. It doesn't work over here. And if they see us on the road in our uniform, they shoot us because they know who we are. We don't know who they are, particularly at night. Because at night, Mr. Barnala, the CM, told me that the police don't go out. The police, when I asked them, they said that, look, we, if, if you allow us to go in plain clothes, we will, it's possible. Because when we go in uniform, they know we are policemen and they straight away shoot us. We don't know who they are, whether they are, whether they are uh, uh, agriculturists looking after their own farms or their own land, or they are uh, terrorists who are out to create trouble. So uh, I had to make those concessions. And I must say that I, I'm not a bit like you all. So I, or, uh, I uh, did not even agree to them by word of mouth because I was dumbstruck. And then I was, uh, uh, they were uh, the police, the, the high court judges who were staying next to me. Their houses were all next to mine. So I went and called on some of them. And two of them told me, Rivero Saab, just ensure that they don't come before us. <laughs> you see, just, uh, it was quite a different kettle of fish. So you had to make certain, when they are not operating within the law, they don't care for the law. You know, the normal uh, criminals, they, 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 uh, they try to run away or they bribe the police to get out of their of their uh, of their problems, but these don't. They just put a bullet through you. So uh, this this is quite a different kettle of fish, and I would never experienced it before. I had gone to uh, Northern Ireland, met the police commissioner there, and also I met the army people there, and. Uh, I learned that their problems were almost like ours, only one fifth the size of ours. So when I told them it's one fifth the size, we have five times more problems than you. 
they said you have five times more people. That is why you have that type of problem. So now uh, terrorism, I've, I've written all about it in my book. We had to, uh, uh, th there is only one way of stopping it because it is more a matter of, of, of emotion. And that is you uh, use a person like Mr. Gill because he was my, my number two and the charge of the operations. And uh, he, he knew how to deal with this. And he told me he's a Sikh jat himself. And he said that a person like you coming from here doesn't want to understand that. So that part of it, uh, he was good at. And uh, he would have his uh, informants and other things. Whereas the other part that winning over the, the great mass of the people, that Mr. Chamanlal and I, Chamanlal was and number three in my list. He was he is also from Madhya Pradesh, Kada, a very, very fine and straight gentleman. But he would come, he and I would go to the villages and talk to the people, explain to them that this is not correct to kill people. And generally they felt what, I, what we said was correct. But they said they are our boys and they don't, uh, they are not working for themselves, but for, for the comb. So that kind of fear of talk, uh, working for the comb, that was eliminated only later when they found that the terrorists had become uh, more, uh, more a nuisance to them than uh, Mr. Gill had made it very difficult for, for the uh, for the even the common person, you know the 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 uh, police also, as Mr. Barnala would tell me, the police would be a nuisance to the people during the daytime, and the terrorists would be a nuisance at night. So we had to put that in order, and that is how we went about our work. I didn't know. I I think I have spoken about the various jobs I've done. There is no better for better service. You see, we are, we are all members of a service. Service means you serve. You are a servant. And you don't behave like, a, like as if you are the, the boss of the show. You have to serve the people. And if you serve the people, I think they will never forget it. The, I, so the police service is something that I uh, suited me because it was part of my inner, uh, uh, you know, formation. I would say even at home, to see that justice is done, particularly to those who have no other voice, like the poor. So they, they never forget. They would never forget. And even poor things, uh, small things, even their home matters. If you can just help them out, I think they'll never forget. So I, I was very happy that I served so many years in the police. I'm sorry that now that kind of service, sometimes I don't see an indication of that type of service being being made, being done. And, and uh, there are, of course, officers who are bothered about it. Many of them leave. I feel sorry for that also, because leaving is no solution. You have to stay within and do your own bit and try to help out wherever you can so that people will know that there is some justice in this world. That if you do something right, you are not going to be troubled. If you do something wrong, of course, you will be. And the correct person will be caught. So this is, in general, the way that I tackle things. And let me tell you, I was not in no department of policing was I was a great um, uh, expert. I was more of a generalist, but I took my men along. And one thing that the IAS officers in Rajasthan had called me uh, at that time when I was the special secretary to talk to them. And they asked me, how is it that you could manage to resist the, the pressure of the politician for postings? I said, I can only think of one reason. The people were on my side. The police force was on my side. And with both those people on my side, the politicians were not able to do anything about it. So let's see how uh, others get the, the message. I have 
written about it in my book. But you can ask me questions and I will be happy to reply. I think our interaction would be a better way of understanding what I stand for. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you sir. It yeah. literally it literally gave me goosebumps listening to not one but two assassination attempts, uh, the first hand account of it. The majority of the world only sees it in movies or reads about it. Only a few brave men and women face such adver adversities and keep going non stop. You are an inspiration, sir. Also, Thank very you. surprised to know your close association with Bijapur and Sainis School and your message on Abid. I cannot help. But remember a famous quote from the Hollywood movie, Dark Knight Rises, where a prisoner tells to the Batman that, how can you move faster than possible? How can you move longer than possible without the powerful impulse of the spirit that is the fear of death? Thank you. Thank you for your kind words, sir. We are truly honored to have you here today. Your presence is a wonderful occasion for all of us. And we are grateful for the opportunity to learn from you. We have indeed taken a lot away from what you have shared here today. And we are also grateful for the opportunity to learn more about your life and experiences from your autobiography, Bullet for Bullet. It is indeed a privilege to hear from the best of the best in the Indian police service. And we thank you once again for your time and sharing your life experiences. Also, I would like to just make a small announcement. We also are joined by IPS from 1976 batch, Mr. Shivanandan, sir. He was a police commissioner of Mumbai city. He hails from Tamil Nadu and served Maharashtra cadre, a highly reputed and respected top cop of Maharashtra cadre. Thank you for joining us today, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you so much. It is always a pleasure listening to Mr. Ribaru and learning. I'm working with him in the PCGT. He's the chairman emeritus and I'm a trustee there. And I admire him always. And he was a role model for us. And uh, he has unlimited energy even now. And I uh, has been inspirational to many. And he has mentored uh, quite a lot of people. I never worked with him on, uh, in the police directly. I never had a chance. Others had. But then he has been always inspirational and motiv motivating to all people like uh, me. And uh, I'm 23 years junior to him, but uh, watching him, listening to him is even today an absolutely inspiring matter. I, I purposely joined this meeting to listen to him so that I can learn a lot. I've read his book. I, I work with him now in the PCGT. That is a, uh, um, that is a, a NGO he's running. He's a chairman emeritus and I'm a trustee. It's an honor. Sir, you have motivated us uh, uh, entirely, uh, uh, a whole lot of us are inspired by hearing you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much for asking me to uh, uh, join you. Thank you, Mr. Inamda. Thank you, Shwananda, sir. Thank you for gracing us with your presence. Now, I request our Q&A panel, which is composed of our amazing Ajits, Satish Maneshinde, sir, Shu Prasad Kenneth, sir, and Colonel Shagil Gundagi, sir, to kindly take over for the next part of the proceedings and moderate the question and answer session with our esteemed guest. Yes. Yeah, Julio sir. Francis Ribeiro, sir. Thank you. Over to you, sir. Yeah, sir, sir uh, thank you very much for gracing us. Sir, I'm happy that... Uh, Satish, Satish, just a minute. I just want to tell our respected Ribeiro, sir, that there are young boys also yeah. who are joined from different schools from different parts of the country. So, <laughs> they, all youngsters who are Within the age of 10 to 18. So yeah. they're also here. For example, you can see one one school there. This is from Sinai School Satara yeah. they're sitting there. So we have from Kashmir, we have from Andhra, we have from Karnataka, Maharashtra. So we have different boys. I just wanted to bring it to notice. And of yeah. course, young girls these days, after the honorable prime minister opened up the Sinai schools to girls, even girls have started joining now. So you will also see some girls there. I just thought I'll bring it to notice. And sir, I will also join in welcoming Mr. Shivanandan. Uh, he's also, we have seen him also, heard of him. Sir, thank you very much for joining us. I'm Ashok Dalwai here. Thank you so much, sir. So nice of you to mention me by name. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Sir, go ahead. Satish, please go ahead. Yeah, sir. Uh, Ribeiro, sir, we are very grateful that he joined us and uh, addressed us. 
and very heartening that you are exhibiting our school tie uh, on your chest. And I must only say one thing to the audience that from where Mr. Ribeiro left, Mr. Shivanandan carried out and uh, he was instrumental in um, eradicating the underworld in Mumbai, though to my disadvantage. Uh, but I'm happy that I'm living in a peaceful city. <laughs> and so I, I work with both of them and uh, I have highest regards for both of them. And uh, they are, they are uh, true citizens who, all the students who are listening to us should adhere to follow and uh, their principles. And they are true ideals of uh, honest public servants who survived only on their salary and still living a good life. So it is not necessary for any one of us to go astray. And uh, a uniformed service like the police force is the best for any individual to join and serve the society. So with these uh, few uh, I'll take submissions, I would, I would request uh, a first question, which uh, you started your career in Kolhapur and Nasik at the ground level. So how was it dealing with the ground level and then the city of Mumbai? In the city of Mumbai? Yeah. How was it? What, what are the difference? What is, the, what is it that brought you up from Kolhapur and uh, Nasik all the way up to Mumbai? So what was your journey? You see, uh, I think the, you had to start your career in the districts. That, would, that was the normal practice. And now the practice seems to have been changed, which is very unfortunate. But I think that it was necessary for all officers first to go and work in the, in, the, in the rural areas where they see real poverty, real, uh, you know, there are a lot of people wanting to be helped and they can be helped if you have got the intention of doing it. And uh, um, Mumbai City, I went after 15 years of working in the districts. So, uh, as I told you, I, I grew up in Mumbai City. And uh, I, I, I'll tell you one story. Young, these young boys who are there, uh, who are listening in, would be interested to hear. Uh, when I was 14, 15 years old, and we used to play cricket outside our, uh, in our compound, the ball went over the wall and hit our neighbors, some whom we didn't know and the, their window was, was smashed. So he, he marched us all off to the police station. Now this was before, in, in, before we got independence and uh, we were all uh, lined up. And since I was the tallest, uh, I was given the right, you know, that happens in, in, in any army or any police, uh, they, they size you up line you up according to your height. So uh, the policeman, after lining us up, went inside and informed the inspector. And the inspector came out. When the inspector came out, we all got a shock. He was a huge, he was a tall man, very slim and well-built, but he was a white man. And uh, we didn't know who, what is going to happen to us. And uh, then he comes out and says, who is the captain? Now, nobody wanted to be say that he was the captain. And uh, somebody squeaked up and said, that is the captain there, and pointed at me. And he said, oh, you are the captain. Come out one step. My, I got a, I was really, uh, not certainly, in, uh, I was a beat at that time, not an abit. And, and they, uh, and the, he uh, looked at me and he said, look, you are the captain and you do, you have not taught your team how to play cricket. The ball has to go along the grounds. It can't go over somebody's wall. And now you better teach them all to how to play cricket. And, and he let us off and we were very happy that he did that. And uh, the, the complainant, of course, was not so happy, but uh, he thought we would all be given a slap each but we, we, we got no slaps. We were only told how to play cricket. And then uh, many years later, my, my nephew, who's today a very uh, uh, well-known doctor, uh, 
cardiologist. He was a brilliant student. He played football in his outside his house and, and also smashed somebody's window. And he was also marched off to the Kulaba police station. And he was put inside the lockup along with his friends. I mean, uh, this was the difference between those days. And, and I mentioned this to the policeman when I took over as commissioner. And I said, this is the difference. And I would like to go back to those days when we, when people, the police have more, are more uh, understanding of young people and not you treat them in that manner and, and get them to get, um, you know, flustered at so young age. So it would be a traumatic experience to be put in a lockup with all the, uh, the see, they, they just put him in the lockup and only when my brother-in-law went, who was himself a very famous doctor, <laughs> they were all let out. Very Pinto, you are mentioning Dr. Pinto, sir. Yes, <laughs> I am. Uh, Shiva Prasad, you can carry yes, on with the questions and I'll interject in between. Thank you, sir. Uh, so very interestingly, I mean, now we can understand why you were able to command respect from your uh, um, police, not only the police, but also the society. Primarily because you tend to connect with people. The way you connected with all of us uh, in today's lecture, you started with our Ajit hai, Abit hai, uh, the motto. You connected uh, the uh, the motto with us. Then you went on to connect us with this, uh, with Vijapur, Sainik School Vijapur, and, and your association with uh, Sainik School Vijapur, your association with our principal. So from this, it's very, very clear that uh, you subconsciously or consciously are able to connect with the people. So this is one, uh, not just a, a lesson for all of us. So maybe did this help you in actually commanding uh, over your people and also having the respect from uh, the politicians and across the societies? Is this the main trait that you feel uh, should be imbibed by all of us? This comes naturally to me, it should come naturally to most of our officers. I mean, you have to, if you are going to serve, you see, and uh, you don't have to be a, uh, you know, to show off or to be a, behave like a master of them. And that is a big problem with quite a number of IPS officers also. They think that they have to be uh, served, not served. And so um, when they learn to serve, I think they will be just as, as acceptable as I was. Now, what is the, you ask me questions? Yeah, Shakil. Sir, so I want to ask uh, you before you Shakil, Shakil decide. Yeah. Uh, you, uh, one of the uh, aspects of policing is also uh, maintaining law and order during strikes and uh, buns, etc. Yeah. And you yeah. faced, you faced a lot of them in uh, Mumbai with the uh, likes of Datta Savant and uh, Samant and George Fernandez and the mill owner strike, the mill worker strike. Uh, what, what was the thought process that despite uh, such uh, union leaders leading strikes, uh, you could manage to bring them back uh, to a very peaceful solution? You were not labeled anti-labor and yet you managed to pull it off, sir. Was well, it, I was uh, not anti-labor. On the contrary, I was not anti-labor. Yeah. And uh, Dr. Samant knew it. I remember Absolutely. that Dr. Samant wanted to he had brought his his uh, big uh, followers, a huge number of them, and Mrs. Indira Gandhi had to go to Shanmukhananda Hall, okay. and he wanted to occupy that whole road and stop her. Wow. So I said, uh, I went to the police station myself because I was told by the DCP, this is what he's going to do. So I said, is he? So I'll come there. So I called him, and I said, doctor, you are going to... Uh, I said that I'm sorry, the Prime Minister is uh, is a person who can go on any street in, in India and you can't stop her or him. And now it is a him, you can't. So you, uh, uh, but you want to demonstrate, you want to show that the Labour is angry. That's fair enough, that is a democratic right. So I will make a solution. I'll suggest a solution. You take half the road, the other half you keep vacant for, for the passage of Mrs. Gandhi and uh, or any other vehicle that are going along that road. 
it was what, and he agreed finally. So all my officers there, including the DCP who was <coughs> Pawar, he said, sir, you have put us in a big ditch. <laughs> Lata Samant will, will, not agree, will not keep his promise. He will let you down. I said, I'll see. I'm quite sure he will not do, he will not do it. He will keep to his promise. And he did. Not only that, I told him you can demonstrate. He did not even do that. Two minutes before she was to go, he, he cleared the road totally. I, I, so they were proved wrong. I mean, you can, if you deal with them and they know that you are not trying to bluff them or you're not trying to be one cleverer than them, I think that they, they will understand it. And uh, I generally, I, I, they were doing their job and I'm doing mine. Absolutely. I remember that the persons who were caught by the, by the um, Romanian security in Bucharest, and they were afterward, they were got 10 years rigorous imprisonment, the two of them. Before I came back home, I called on the home minister, on the foreign minister. The foreign minister asked me, Mr. Rivero, Mr. Ambassador, they would say, have you got any request? So I said, yes, I would like to meet those because they are my uh, citizens of my country. So he said that we'll have to ask them whether they agree. So I said, fair enough. And then he phoned me saying that they don't agree to see you. So I said, fine, that is a different matter. But I would have liked to talk to them because they are doing their job in even attacking me. They are combatants and they are doing their job. I'm doing mine. I have, there's, I have no problem with them. And I have no personal anger, anger or animosity against them. So this is how it should be. As amazing clarity, sir, as a leader. Amazing integrity. Yes. Sense of purpose. Yes, I don't know about that, but I, this is how I saw it. So they were quite surprised at what I said. I said, I have no, nothing, nothing in my heart against them. They were just doing their job because in, the, in war, for instance, you are all, many of you are, most of you are from the Army or Navy or Air Force. I mean, you, you don't kill because you want to kill them. You, have, you don't even know whom you have killed. Absolutely. But the problem is that it is a part of, and you also could be killed. It's your life against them. That's it. Absolutely, sir. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Shiv Prasad, sir. Sir, you want to say something or like ask? You ask, you ask. Uh, so there's one uh, interesting thing. Um, you talk, you walked us through your career and then you also talked about your posting in uh, Gujarat um, as a uh, uh, TGP. And from there, uh, you went to Delhi. Um, you were in the position, uh, a senior position. From there, actually, the Honorable Prime Minister uh, requested you to go, to go and uh, assume the charge of DGP. In fact, uh, it is said that in your book also, you mentioned that two of your uh, colleagues, uh, civil service uh, colleagues, pra Pradhan sir and uh, Deshmukh sir, actually <laughs> told you, why are you accepting that? Yet, you took it as a challenge to serve the nation. So I, mean, I don't know whether I took it as a challenge, but I, if the Prime Minister tells you to go, you go. That's all. I mean, I, only, <laughs> I thought about it only in that way. Even my wife was quite surprised. She didn't know because I had already reached Punjab by the time I phoned her and said, I'm now. <laughs> she was very happy that I was in a non-uniformed uh, role. And then suddenly I was put in back in uniform and I had to say, send for my uniform and things like that. I had nothing with me when I went to Punjab. I was just put in a plane and taken there. And the Mr. Banala said, you are now the DGP. <laughs> well, that is it. Anyway, so th that is a different matter that I went there. Uh, but you know, it's not only Mr. Pradhan who was the Home Secretary, and uh, also Mr. Deshmukh who was the Chief Secretary Chief at Secretary. that time in Maharashtra. And he was a personal friend of mine. In fact, the two NGOs, which I was, I'm running the Mohalla committee and the PCGT. He was involved in both and we had made him the chairman. And Mr. Deshmukh was very, very, uh, he used to be our mentor. He used to tell us, you know, he was a wise man. And, but beside these two IAS officers, 
I also had the president phoning me. I, I took over in the evening. Next morning, early morning, I had a call from the president of India telling me, Rivero Sahab, ab kyu ye, 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 <laughs> liya hai tumhare haan. ऑपरेशन ब्लू थंडर ब्लैक थंडर सॉरी वॉज अ ग्रेट सक्सेस ब्लैक थंडर सर अंडर यू एज ए डी जी पी you managed to bring out uh, the terrorists almost without fighting uh, firing a single bullet you starved them out in the full glare of uh, the media and later you uh, your peace overtures along with chamanlal were a great success sir. and you continue to do that with human rights even today that has been the hallmark of your success i think sir you see uh this uh, uh, that we did not fire a bullet is not true because they were uh we we thought that if we brought down one or two of them because they were walking around with their weapons and they were inside the parikrama sir and uh, if from our vantage position we could bring down one or two i mean they would have to dispose of that body and that would bring them out so we did that and that really brought them out that they had to because where would they uh, they had to get rid of that body how could they do it inside that parikrama so there was a, a big uh, we did bring down one or two with a sniper sniper bullet i'm not sure whether it was one or two probably one because that was enough to to make them uh, think about the disposal of the dead body so but the funny part of it is even after they were caught openly and it was shown on every possible television in the world there were people from all countries with their television crew and it was shown in so many countries and the our lawyer said that all of them will be convicted not one was convicted not one the the, the judges were so scared you see the judges told me that it is not only we who will lose our life but our sons and our families so it's not a joke they told they told me this is something quite different we have never experienced this before yeah i'll just take one second sir because uh, our the first school captain of sainik school bijapur uh, he just wanted to have 10 seconds 10 to 15 seconds of um, colonel bgv kumar uh, yeah. he wanted to say something bgv sir yeah. are you there sir uh, yeah yeah very much uh, uh good evening sir it was a fantastic speech and uh, uh it was really heartwarming to hear your uh life story actually in short i am from the special forces the parachute regiment sir i am about 20 years younger to you uh i have heard your uh, words of abith mentioned a number of times so i would like to tell you something about abith in a lighter way yeah the uh, field marshal uh, sam malisha the famous coat of his is he is from the gorkha regiment the eight gorkha regiment he was the colonel of the regiment so he says if someone says he is not afraid or he is a beat then either he is telling a lie or he is a gorkha <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> good go that's all sir <laughs> thank so, you very much sir thank you it was a wonderful satish sir satish sir yeah. Yeah, wait wait are so now Shakil, Shakil, I think you know Shiva and and Shakil kindly now complete your set Q and A, right, sir? Okay, so that it runs smoothly, and thereafter Satish Manishinde can come in with his questions. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the various uh, legislative frameworks have evolved uh, with more laws being brought out like uh, TADA, POTA, and now UAPA to help the police force tackle organized crime and extremism. Uh, kindly enlighten us sir as to how these laws can be used judiciously without trampling on rights and liberties enshrined in our constitution especially my own, for law my enforcers my own view sir is that we have enough laws if we implement them and enforce them 
The yeah. problem is they are not enforced and then we think some more new law should be brought in. Okay. And we bring in all these new laws. And only the laws are used to harass people. Uh, I, I think that uh, there are no need of all these laws. You just do your work. I mean, if there is, is the IPC not enough to, to, to uh, catch hold of all these terrorists, it is. I mean, they can't go around killing people and shooting them on the road. Surely this is absolute murder. Absolutely. And uh, so I personally feel that these are all uh, just things that are, if there is some lacuna somewhere here and there, it's a minor lacuna. The main thing is they are not enforced. If they are enforced and they are enforced impartially. Impartially. I think right, that, they, that <laughs> would be the rule of law. And people will know if you do a, if you do something wrong, you will be hauled up. But Absolutely, sir. With prejudice, yeah. yeah. Going back sir. to basics, yeah. Right, sir. Thank you. Sir. Uh, so, since time is short, I mean, we've discussed about your uh, policy, sir. Another interesting part of it is uh, you've served uh, as a commissioner in Mumbai. Mumbai is also known for cricket and uh, cine cinema, cine stars throughout the country. You know, we are all united by, you know, the, the cricket and cinema. And all these stars, both the cine stars and cricket stars are all uh, loved. And police, they also serve, I mean, serve the cause of uh, uh, some, uh, as brand ambassadors, you know, they, they come to the functions of police. So you've got any experience of uh, uh, dealing with them? Um, and what was your interaction during your time, sir, with the cricket players and cine artists? I have no, not much interaction with cine artists that I, I must warn you. So the, <laughs> Uh, I never went for their parties or or, or uh, had anything to do with them. But not because I wanted to treat them as untouchables or something, not at all. Uh, I, I would respect them like anyone else. But uh, I didn't have that interest. Whereas as regards cricketers, uh, though I used to go for the matches because the police commissioner is always given a, a good seat. But... Uh, we could only go for a little while. That seat was used only for a little while because our work would not allow us to spend too much time there. But the cricketers, I would I would come to know in those days. So Vadekar and they were all my friends. And, and now after I retired, they stay near my house. Gavaskar, Vadekar, they all stay. And Solkar in particular, he so always, uh, always stop by my my compound and and wish me so so i i have a good ek, uh, report ek, with cricketers because i personally love cricket eknath dandu uh, solkar yeah huh? eknath dandu solkar yeah uh, yeah they stay near me absolutely yes, how old he's he's dead solkar is gone yeah, yeah. he's gone what he got also sir uh, uh -huh. you you elaborately discussed about the two assassination attempts. Uh, yeah. Yet, uh, in the book you write, uh, you make very light of the assassination attempts. Uh, you just say that uh, I was lucky. You, I mean, you just use the, you use the word very lightly that you're lucky that you had these two destiny, trust with destinies of your life. I mean, how is it that, uh, was it your uh, uh, service motto that uh, made you to make very light comment of these two assassinations? No motto. It, it's something that happened as part of the service. Uh, you you should expect this if, uh, if you are, you know, for example, in Mumbai city, I was the commissioner. I used to go all alone anywhere. And people used to, I, in those days, we never had any security or anything, like, uh, not even in your car. So I don't know, uh, it, it never struck me. So now, after I went to Punjab, then all sort of security is started. The security began only after Punjab. Now I can't, I never driven a car after that. I've driven, I've not driven my car for how many years? From 1950, um, what <coughs> year did I go to Punjab? 1986. 86, yeah. From 86 onwards, I haven't touched a car. I have to have a driver. I have to have somebody sitting with me and somebody looking out for possible assassination attempts. So this is something that is not a very pleasant thing to 
to be a part of, but you can't help it. I suppose part of life. You get used to it. Sir, I can only tell you, you get used to it. So for the uniformed person, sir, not only you, but your entire family, you know, stands by you, is at a risk, like seen during the attack uh, on Mrs. Ribeiro, sir, God bless her soul. So how was uh, the, your family, sir, how was the support? What were uh, the circumstances uh, to enable you to uh, discharge your duties, sir, so effectively? You know, I, was, I can only remember my younger daughter. I have two daughters. Sir. One daughter was very mad at all the she didn't want around. all those people. And she would not allow them to come into her car. Okay. And so they, they got on motorbikes and went. And so she phoned me and I was in Romania and she said, tell them to get out. <laughs> so I said, I can't do that. I uh, you, You'll have to bother. I'm sorry about putting you in all this. But you know, actually, our idea of, of uh, uh, security okay. or it's, it's all warped. warped yeah. On the contrary, you invite. Uh, now, nobody knew she was my daughter. And she never tells it. I mean, she does not go around boasting, I'm Rivero's daughter. And then suddenly this thing happens. And then I remember the, the, ch the children in, uh, in my um, daughters were, how old were they? They were, yeah. No, I think it was whose children were put in. I think it was, uh, but they married. I remember that some children were put in the school and the school principal wanted them removed because uh, of the people who were running that school because they said that it was a, a danger to the others. So my daughter phoned me and said that this is what the principal is saying. I said, it's very ridiculous on a part. But the main thing is that the police used to go there. And that is what caused all the trouble. Why should they have gone? Nobody knew that they were my children or grandchildren. Neither did we boast or say, or neither did we ask for any. And uh, you know, one thing about the, 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 the danger to me was from the Khalistani terrorists. And the Khalistani terrorists don't uh, bother about women. And they will only get them. They are only after males. <laughs> that is their... Unless the woman uh, has, uh, has, has sneaked and told about, you know, uh, been, uh, been, uh, uh, become an informer or something. Otherwise, they won't touch them. So now coming to uh, your tenure in Bombay yeah. during 1983 and 84, you experienced both the smuggling syndicate and the underworld. Smuggling syndicate of Haji Mastan and Yusuf Patel and uh, Karim Lala. And the new breed of uh, underworld, I wouldn't want to name them. But what difference did you find in both sets of uh, antisocials? It well, wasn't so violent during those days. I must make a confession that I, though I'm supposed to have put them down or something, my, I, used, I was a leader. I took hold. No, Mr. Pra, Mr. Pawar was one of my DCPs. And I knew that he was the type who would be able to put this right. So I, so I gave him all the powers and whatever help he wanted, but I, he did it. Now, the knowledge about them was not so good as far as I'm concerned. Shivananda knows a lot about them. I, I, I was not and I never got into the, into the, Shivananda. I, I, so since you suggested uh, Mr. Shivanandan, yeah. in one of our next meetings, I'll request the organizers to invite him to speak to all of us on how we dealt with the underworld in Bombay. Yeah, yeah, he knows. He, he, he yeah. is one person who would be able to answer that. Yeah, so one more thing I want to ask you, yeah. you, you had a very successful career as a police officer. How come you did not have anybody to follow you in your family? Nor has Mr. Shivanandan has anybody to follow him in his family in the police force. Is it because of what they saw you facing or is it because they did not pursue it as a career? Uh, in fact, I never intended to join the police force myself. I just appeared for the competitive exam and, 
and according to those rules i was sent to the police service and i rather liked it but it was not it was not by choice my father was in the postal service and my mother was keen that i should go to the postal service <laughs> <laughs> so it was it is like that so it is not a question of choice and and most of the people who come uh, come like that you know they are they are just sent to this service and that service so now having uh, had you speak for about 90 minutes almost i had request uh, the organizer to carry on with the next set of uh, programs so that we don't tire you out too much 90 minutes for your yeah. uh, age. age i won't say age but uh, you had enough of it uh, for 90 minutes we don't let you any freedom so satish please carry on with the next uh, agenda thank you satish manishinde sir shu prasad kenet sir colonel shakil gundagi sir it was really an interesting and informative q and a session the conversation was riveting a lot of pertinent questions were asked and a lot to unravel and learn from the responses thank you rivero sir for obliging us it was a pleasure to tune into this dialogue and i am sure that the audience found the discussion to be both enriching and thought provoking now i would like to request our mentor billard ashok dalwai sir ashok dalwai sir belongs to the batch of 1975 he has had an illustrious career in indian administrative services serving the states of karnataka and odisha he is now the ceo of nraa national rain fed area authority with a mission to promote prosperity of farmers and ensure inclusive growth in rain fed areas of the country on a sustainable basis sir if you would be so kind as to share your thoughts with the audience we would be most grateful over to you sir sir initially i must say that he joined as a police officer and then shifted to the administrative service <laughs> quite common yes sir half of, <laughs> half of the, uh, the, the the that that is common yes. nowadays in our days in our in our times we were not allowed to yes, reappear or something yes. but now they are allowed yes sir so thank you very much sir uh, uh, first of all on behalf of all of us i would like to express the gratitude that you were kind enough to join us and you honored our ajit knowledge forum in fact the first idea of inviting you came from mr gopal hasur the president of ajit alumni association himself one of the super cops of karnataka state like you sir he also had an attempt on his life and destiny was kind on him just as it has been on you so he would be uh, uh, speaking after i have i'm done i just want to tell you that in the 1980s when i started my career you were at the helm of affairs i remember very clearly seeing your photograph addressing different schools and professional groups in the illustrated weekly and then as i was posted to odisha as though the event was only yesterday i can recall as i traveled with my collector when i was on a you know from my probation asking him sir mr ribero has been sent to gujarat and from there now he is in punjab and what do you think of his services you know basically i was very inquisitive to know what kind of a life one should lead so the young collector he spoke so highly of you and said that there are very few people in services who can give their life they can place the nation before their own self so that was sometimes in the mid 1980s and thereafter of course we have been seeing you and all of us require role models and i personally feel that we all of us cannot become marx or mahatma gandhi we need heroes who are tangible who are within our proximity and it is these kind of tangible gods on earth 
who actually inspire and motivate youngsters. And I would place you in that kind of an orbit. Listening to you today, all that was said of you, all that we have heard of you, becomes so crystal clear. Your advice to all the youngsters here who are already officers and many who want to be officers or join public life is to lead a moral and ethical life. No advice can be better than one where you say connect with the people you are meant to serve. And that's how all of us who keep complaining about political interference will, will stand to benefit. In fact, we all know that politicians are also wise. They interfere only when they see that the officer has certain personal vested interests or the officer does not have his moral authority. Otherwise, they, are, they either do not have the conviction or the courage to interfere. And that's what you have, sir, communicated. For all of us, what is very important is your willingness to give credit to others. You very clearly said how you left Mr. K.P.S. Gill, another celebrated police officer, to become the hard face of the police force against the terrorists and let yourself and Mr. Chamanlal do the most critical, sensitive job of connecting with the people. And this is how teams are built. But very few can own up this kind of delegation of responsibilities and give credit to the person to whom it is due. This is another lesson that we would certainly like to carry along with us after listening to you this evening. And sir, as you spoke about Commander Syria Globo, we, we really were touched, particularly those of my generation who were his students. He's, we respect him even to, to this day. His advice to all of us at the assembly would be, boys, do not forget the soil you come from. This, this particular sentence keeps ringing in many of us. He was one of our best principals who followed command, Wing Commander K.D. Singh, another celebrated principal. He taught us chemistry. He had the best of handwriting, the best hockey player, and then he was a gentleman. As we say in the uniformed services, he was a gentleman and an officer. So, sir, we found that you are as though an elder member of our Ajit family. The way you have worn you know, the tie for us, the way you address us as Ajits, and the way you talked about being a beat, once again, such an honest expression, somebody who has achieved so much like you could really boast saying that I was never afraid. But here you were, that yes, you were never a beat. You always, there was a caution of life concern. So I think that this is what our young boys, particularly studying at various schools now and listening to you, should be taking home. And sir, I can tell you from my own little experience of having served for two years in IPS. And I, I, for the first time with practical experience, I realized that if the fundamental rights and if those lofty ideals of the preamble to the constitution have any meaning, it's only when we have highly responsible, highly sensitive and highly human police officers. Within a very short period, sir, when I was serving in Gudur on the borders of Chennai, because Gudur was exposed to all the worst things that would come in from Chennai. The people who came from prostitutes, the people, people who came for burglary, people who came to play cards, people who came for all kinds of nefarious activities. I had unfortunate incident of seeing the women being compromised by the people from that side. I had, the, I had an issue where, where there was a murder. And after three days of investigation, when my inspector was almost forcing me to close the case, I realized that he was putting a wrong person as an accused. 
somehow it didn't appeal to me i left the lunch i had sat for and i said let's call once again and within by by evening we were able to know that that young boy who was being accused as the murderer was not the murderer it was a dismissed police constable who had been running an excise shop unlicensed was a guy who had actually murdered this person that evening sir i realized that what power the police has in our country or in the world if police want want to make somebody a murderer then his life is gone so police need to be extremely sensitive law abiding and that's the lesson that's that we learned from you so thank you very much sir and the last message you are given to all of us never run away from the battle there are many good men and women officers who cannot tolerate the corruption who cannot tolerate the interference who cannot tolerate the inadequacy in the system but instead of taking on they quit so your advice to us is not to quit i think this message will go loud and clear particularly to the young boys and girls who are still in schools who are aspiring to be civil servants aspiring to be the officers in the armed forces aspiring to be politicians themselves we we um, thank you so much sir for giving us this messages in a very simple straightforward and honest man honest manner which are the values that you have lived your life by thank you very much sir and uh, we we would like to seek your blessings and your guidance for our ajit alumni association and we would be uh, extremely glad to uh, have your umbrella support for all of us all the time thank you sir thank you ashok dalwai sir it was really a heartfelt address now i would like to request the president of ajit alumni association the triple a the super cop from karnataka known popularly as a man for all seasons he is none other than our beloved gopal hasur sir gopal hasur sir has had an illustrious career in indian police services he was actively involved in anti virapan operations and was instrumental in bringing down the notorious criminal and smuggler often described as the biggest manhunt in post independent india gopal hasur sir has been a recipient of many honorary awards and medals including president's medal for gallantry on two occasions he now runs various ngos which encompasses from hospitals to sports associations to orphanages he is actively contributing to the betterment of our civil society it is great to have you here sir i would like to humbly request you to provide your presidential address over to you sir uh good evening to one and all thank you satish and thank you ashok for that uh, very generous introduction of mine i stand nowhere in comparison with our chief guest today let me be very frank about it the as the president of the association one good news i have just been given 4 minutes to speak that is 240 <laughs> seconds and you will have to bear with me for that the bad news is that i am going to take a little more longer and i request you to uh, have your attention to what i am speaking because i'll also be speaking about the uh, the triple a our association first and foremost thank you ajit knowledge forum akf for bringing one of the most respected and also revered julio rebero sir to this program and organizing it so so meticulously without any flaw after listening to our guest today i recall if i my uh, memory goes back to my school days when our english teacher used to teach us a few of the plays by shakespeare one play i remember very vividly is that of antony and cleopatra and in that play cleopatra is described to antony by one of the characters of the play and that character says neither age can with with her not 
customs tail her infinite variety. Neither age can wither her, nor custom stale can stale her infinite variety. Ribero, sir, at 93 years, let me be very frank with you, age has not withered you, nor your infinite charm of what I thought of you as a police officer when I had joined the police force. You still exhibit the same charm today in this program. You have held us spellbound and you have given a very scintillating address and it was with utmost sincerity and it came from your heart. heart. You have also been outspoken. You have been outspoken in the past and you continue to be outspoken even today. As someone mentioned about your articles to the Tribune, I keep following up all your articles and I am really amazed at the clarity of your thoughts, your writing skills, your speech, and your action too. They are all seem to be in one unison, which is very, very rare for individuals. <clears throat> you mince no words and call a spade a spade. Mr. Shivarandan is on the show a couple of days back. I spoke to him. Just to understand a little more from what, apart from what I have read or heard about you, Ms. Shivanandan described you in one single sentence. He said, Mr. Giulio Ribeiro stands the tallest among the 4,000 IPS officers of this country. Kudos to you, sir. Somebody talking about you like this which we are all aware, but somebody who has seen you very, very closely coming out with this statement. I thank Mr. Shivanandan for joining this show and uh, making his presence felt. Sir, I would also like to add a tinge of my personal note uh, in this program. You have been twice uh, shot at twice and you escaped. You survived due to the will of the God. I too have been shot and very critically injured, lying on the hospital bed for six months with my trachea and esophagus reconstructed, six major surgeries, and God was with me, and I survived. Thereafter, too, as Ashok rightly mentioned, I have been fired at a couple of times by the gangsters and by the Aluma terrorists after whom I was going. I have been awed by your personality right from the beginning of my service. When I had joined the police service, the Karnataka State Police Service, way back in 1980, you were at the helm of affairs, like what typically Dr. Ashok said. We used to read about you, we used to hear about you. On one of the occasions, I came to Delhi to, uh, to undergo a course in the Institute of uh, Criminology and Forensic Science. That was somewhere in the year 1986 as an assistant commissioner of police in Bangalore city. One Saturday morning, I called up my friend, again Ajit, my classmate of mine who had settled in Delhi, late Rakesh Sharma, a great footballer. I told him why not we travel to Chandigarh and meet three personalities there. We'll make an effort. We have no appointment, but we'll do it. I came to your office, sir. And uh, you are in the, you are in a hurry to go to some place. You are getting out of your office. We just wished you and saw the awe of your personality there. Later on, we spent a few minutes with your deputy, Mr. Chaman Lal, who was in the next chamber sitting in the secretariat. And uh, those left an indelible impression on my mind as to how I can transform myself as a bold, at the same time, very compassionate police officer. Thank you for inspiring me in my police service so far. Again, later, much later, I think you had retired by then. And as the Joint Commissioner of Police in Bangalore City, heading the crime. One fine day, I got a call from you. I do not think you will be able to recall it. Uh, you called me and I was actually excited when you said that you are Mr. Ribeiro speaking. You are at that time heading the Indian music industry. Yeah. I think you are fighting against the 
piracy and uh, uh, copyright violations. And you said that Bangalore is one center where you have a lot of issues with piracy of the music and the copyright violations. You give me some tips. Within the next 48 hours, we conducted the most massive raids in the heart of Bangalore city and seized truck loads of pirated uh, cassettes. And I knew, and I'm sure you would definitely be knowing much better, a part of this money would be going to the mafia and the underworld because they would get their haftas from such uh, uh, illicit businesses. So I think it has been a very, very exciting time for us seeing you and hearing you it's so loud and clear and with a very, very clear conscience. And it, all that you spoke, in my opinion, came from the bottom of your heart. We are, as a alumni, we are extremely grateful and I must compliment the Ajit Knowledge Forum for uh, bringing you to this show uh, this evening. A few words about policing may be apt. Uh, Ajit's friends, people on the show, let me tell you that policing is extremely challenging. It is walking on the razor's edge. Damned if you do and damned if you do not. To act or not to act is an eternal dilemma for a policeman because he has no luxury of time, unlike others, unlike other departments. More than about 20 to 22 institutions of the government, of the society, including the courts, sit on the judgment on the actions that we take on the spur of the moments. So I recall my training days when one of the instructors, they all used to be inspectors, they were all very practical officers and they, would, uh, they, were, they had worked in the field and they knew what genuinely good policing was. And our instructors always told us, you don't have, the people look up to you for immediate action when you find that something is going wrong. Your duty is to go and act. And thereafter, maybe you take a little more time, try to find out the law under which you can justify your actions. So this is a very, very interesting job for the police. You first act, then later on find because innumerable laws that you need to administer and you have to find out the way in which your legal action can be justified under the provisions of the law. Sir, it has been a very, very memorable event and a very extremely inspiring for all of us. And I wholeheartedly appreciate you sparing so much of time on this evening and spending time with us. I would not like to take much of the time. I would like to congratulate a large number of my alumni on this occasion. I would like to congratulate many of our alumni who have been awarded, rewarded, and have come to occupy very, very senior positions in the defense, in bureaucracy, in private sector, in politics, and in enterprises. So a huge uh, uh, appreciation to all my Ajit's friends in this forum. Friends, I think now is the time for us to give a little more thought to the AAA. As uh, Dr. Ashok rightly mentioned, that uh, 2023, sir, is our platinum jubilee year. So 200, 2023 is a very, very important e uh, year for all of us and for our alma mater. Friends, we need to focus on the Platinum Jubilee celebrations. But one thing I can tell you that the association, our alumni association has become big. We have people across the globe in all walks of life. And thanks to COVID and the efforts of a few of you, we have a large number of WhatsApp groups through which we have been remaining connected, networked, and we are able to exchange ideas and a uh, uh, lot of other things with, uh, amongst us. We have set up a couple of verticals, again, the initiative of Ashok Dalwai and his uh, team of members. We have set up the Ajit Knowledge Forum, we have set up the Entrepreneurs Forum, and we have set up so many forums. 
and these forums have been working extremely well. Now we need to evolve a proper structure. The structure is getting evolved on its own. Everything takes time, but I think sooner or so, we need to evolve a proper structure and go into our uh, Platinum Jubilee year uh, 2023. The grand finale would be somewhere in September and that all of us need to come together to celebrate it. In the meantime, we may have a number of activities by individual batches, individual groups, like typically like the Ajit Golf Championship that is coming up in Mysore on 6th and 7th. The, then there is going to be a meet in the Whistling Woods. All these things can go on simultaneously amidst us. But let us all focus to ensure that we remain together, we discuss issues and uh, freeze what we are expected to do during the course of this year. Raising finances would be a very, very important thing. I appeal to Ajis that if you have to celebrate the Platinum Jubilee year well, we need to come together. We need to check out a program, identify the locations, the dates, the guests, so on and so forth. A lot of things need to be done. We need to raise the resources too. I appeal to at least 100 of the Ajis to come forward and donate 25,000 rupees each. That would make it 25 lakh rupees. Our 200 Ajis can donate 10,000 rupees. The others can donate in whatever capacity that is there. It can all get into a proper account and an extremely uh, responsible body of Ajits will carry forward the activities that are to be done. But the most important thing is we all need to come together and work together to make the uh, Platinum Jubilee year a great success. Having said these few words, I once again thank our chief guest, sir, once again, extremely grateful to you on behalf of the Science School Bijapur and all those who are listening to this show. And uh, we'll carry on, uh, we get, uh, whatever that you have conveyed to us, even at this age of mine, it inspires me. And uh, I'm sure a lot of youngsters are there who have listened to this program. They would all be enthused. And I think we'll try to conduct ourselves better to the betterment of the society around us. Saying these few words, once again, I thank the Ajit College Forum, AKF, the whole team. I can't mention the number of names are there. Today is Mahashivratri night. All of you are going to be very, very busy. So I won't come in the way. Once again, thank you all. Finally, Ajit Hai or Abit Hai. Thank you. Good yeah. night. Sir, uh, uh, pardon my impertinence. There is one youngster, Subbu Reddy. He wants to ask a question to Mr. Ribeiro. What is your fi uh, final message to the youngsters? Uh, so many of us watching, especially students, youngsters of this nation. They want to emulate your fearlessness. But what is your final message, sir? Thank you. I think that young people should really understand that there are two big evils in our society. There are two evils which have to be fought. One is corruption and the other is communalism. Which one is worse, I don't know. I can't make out because I'm fighting both. Wow. But if they join in this fight, they should know more about what is happening and why it is happening and see in, in their own way how they can, they can take cudgels against these two evils. Because unless we fight these two evils, we will really not progress. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Thank you, Gopal Asur, sir, for your presidential remarks. We are Thank grateful you. for your leadership and guidance. Now, I would like to invite Amo, who is an Ajit from the batch of 2020, to present the vote of thanks. Over to you, Amo. Thank you, Satisha. Myself, Amok Bala, roll number 4920 Haisla House. What a scintillating and engaging conversation it was. It's my honor and privilege to propose a lot of thanks. I would like to extend my gratitude to respected Julio Ribeiro, sir. So thank you for enlightening us with your experience and humility despite of your very busy schedule. We're all inspired by your great words, sir. Hats up to you, sir. We would not be here without our school's generosity. Thank you, our alma mater, our beloved teachers, 
for giving us this opportunity to gather today for a cause that may benefit many, energize others. We have been fortunate enough to be backed by our beloved principal, Group Captain Bisht, and our sincere gratitude to the principal, administrative staff, and students of Sainik School Bijapur, Sainik School Satara, Sainik School Nagarota, Sainik School Sujanpur, Sainik School Kunjapura, Sainik School uh, Amravati, Doon Management College, Amir MBA College, Kannada School Examba, CBSC Nandi, PU College Nandi, and Degree College Nandi, PG College Nandi, B. Ed College Nandi, and CBSC Nippani, PU College Nippani, Degree College Nippani, and KLE BBA College Chikodi, Color Bucket Limited Kenya, University of Malaysia, Magnum Tuff, and Powers IFM. You have been a constant support with your lively encouragement. My sincere thanks to you. Huge round of applause to all Ajit's families and friends, and many, many young students and aspirants, those who have joined this event today. In large number, it's just because of you, every AKF event be a grand success. Our sincere and heartfelt gratitude to the Ajit Gopal Hosu, sir, President of AAA, our mentor, Colonel Biju Kumar, sir, our observer, Vishwanath Patet, sir, and Dr. Ashok Dalwai, sir, for inspiring us to reach the stars and helping us to realize our potential and work as a team. We are indebted to our seniors, Shakil sir and Shiv Prasad sir for such a thought-provoking and insightful questions. We at Ajit Knowledge Forum have been fortunate enough to be backed by a team of very motivated and dedicated Ajits led by Sudarshan Sateja sir. Thanks to Maltes Jivanav sir, Dr. Vekan Bankoli sir, Prakash Shaigavi sir, Ranga Jagannath sir, Umesh Sajjanava sir, Vijay Thakur sir for their wonderful contribution. Our sincere and heartfelt thanks to the awesome Satish Manishinde sir, Shu Prasad Kenneth sir, Arvind Pradhani sir, Prakash Shaigavi sir for beautifully anchoring this very insightful conversation. Sorry if I have missed out any names. Once again, on behalf of AKF and on my own behalf, thank you everyone for taking time to be here today for hearing me and with your presence and your interaction, you have made it a very memorable and special event. Thank you, Ajit Hai, Abit Hai. Over to you, Satish Rao. Thank you, Amog. Now, I would like to request all the audience members present to kindly rise for the national anthem that would be played. Satosh. Let's sing otherwise ourselves. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. One, two, three. One day, one day, On that note, thank you one and all for joining today's program and making it a success. Wish you all a very happy Mahashuratri. Ajit hai, Abit hai, Jai Hind. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you.